first time I came to Japan was many many years ago at that time I was still a graphic design student I didn't have a big budget dedicated to art supply stores so now I'm back in Tokyo again and I want to explore as many art stores as I can in one day Shall I compare to a summer day? She's the sun, she fill up the gray Quench my thirst, she's my lemonade my plan for the day is to visit four different art stores in four different areas. I don't know what I will manage to do by the end of the day, but hopefully the store close a bit later. I'm in front of the store now, and if all the stores really belong to Sekaido, then it's definitely really, really big. Let's go! This floor was all about office and school supplies with some cute stationery as well. I did not have a big affinity with this floor so I went to the next floor right away for graphic art supplies. different types of paper for drawing comics they call it um, comic book paper different sizes these are special pens for drawing eyes and they really look like eyeliners they know their marketing this really small figure I think it's very practical if you only need one to help you draw and that does not really occupy much space and I love this pen as well, it's quite small, it's very like easy to pack and travel with. Another brand of glass here. I'm so happy. If you watch my video in London, you'll know that it was so hard for me to find like um, a lot of options. And this is only the first store of the day in Japan. Um, I'm already finding so many options and um, of course I found my green gouache whole bind. I'm not sure if I'm going to buy some today because I need to take a train tomorrow. I really love pastel gouache, like they always catch my eyes first. I think I'm going to buy a few too today. <laughs> Have any of you ever tried this brand before? Please share your experience. I feel like if I don't leave this store soon, I'll end up buying all the colors. The second floor is dedicated to fine art supplies. They have a really huge selection of um, oil painting and also acrylic. They also have an entire aisle with um, all kinds of brushes. I found this really minimal, beautiful looking watercolor paper block. I really want to buy it, but I don't think I can. It's good. A lot of options from Ash. This is my favorite watercolor paper. I use it a lot for painting my illustration because the quality is really, really amazing. Hi, hi. I'm really happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. That was quite a big store. I'm not sure it is as big as uh, Tokyo Hands in Shinjuku or Shibuya. The first floor was all about cute stationery, like cute postcards. Um, washi tapes. On the second floor, they had more um, graphic art or graphic design oriented supplies with a really big selection of gouache actually. And if you want to find like the fine art supplies, you need to go to the third floor. <laughs> 
where they group um, acrylic painting and oil painting together with all the other fine art supplies. I mainly use gouache, so I just went directly into that section. <laughs> the store is really, really big, so you're not going to get like the artistic independent feel of going to a small local art store, but it's still a very functional and practical shop. If you want to find something, I think you most probably find it there. The next store we are going to is another really big art store. It's one of the first, if not the first, to start selling oil painting and uh, art supplies hey, for oil painting. I just got off the subway at the Jimbo Cho station. This is where the second art store is. This area is well known for its used bookstores. Uh, I mean, as soon as I got off the subway, I spotted like maybe seven of them right away. If you're a fan of vintage books, this area is really worth a visit. I'm in front of a very weird looking building. And of course, this has to be our second art store. As soon as you enter the store, you will see this corner that is filled with all the enchanting <laughs> items, stationery. It's definitely not an overstatement to say that they love cats in this store. Like they have so many things related to cats. <laughs> I love it. section and this aisle is dedicated to all kind of pastels like they have the oil pastels, the dry pastels. I have never seen an <coughs> aisle dedicated to pastels that is so big. Schmincke, Dollar and Rowney, but also from um, Sennelier, I think. Yes, from Sennelier. I've tried my hands on pastels, but they're not my favorite medium to use because they <laughs> get dirty quite quickly. Look at what I found. I'm in the wash section. Um, they have a lot of gouache from the Liquitex brand. I have never come across gouache from this brand before, so I'm just going to go through the colors that they have and see if I find something interesting. So I mentioned that Umpodo was the first art store to start selling oil paint. They also have their own brand of oil paint, so if you're interested in oil paint, I think this place is really cool for that too. Let's move on to the bottom floor. They have so many stationery cards here. They all look super unique and really cute. Depending on the country, sometimes the same art supply can look different. For example, that wooden brush uh, that is used for woodcut printing, it looks totally different from what I'm used to and I love this kind of experience so much. The second floor is definitely dedicated to stationery and greeting cards. I just got out of the 
store. Wow, <laughs> that store just has so much personality. Like they had so many things related to cat. To just be able to go through all the stationery, the greeting cards with um, cute animals, cute cats, and have all the decorative items be centered around um, cats. And I also saw the beret hat with the cat ears and I wanted to buy it so much but <laughs> I didn't buy it it just felt so so cool to be inside that store Japan is a country that fascinates many people for a different reason. For me it was because I grew up watching a lot of Japanese anime like Doraemon, Detective Conan and Shinshan. It's my favorite anime by the way, I still love it very much. One of my biggest travel dreams was to come to Japan and visit like the whole country. So I was very excited when my uh, best friend from high school and I decided that we would come to <laughs> Japan together and like spend an entire month in the country to just explore everything. I remember that I worked for a whole year um, to be able to save up the money to come to Japan but my budget to buy the supplies was quite limited. I remember that I was really fond of Copic's pen at that time and one Copic pen just caught so much money for me as a student. In a huge, In a huge selection, selection of colors, I have so many colors. Many colors. I would refrain myself from going into uh, too many art stores. I just went into one actually, and it was the Tokyo Hands of Shinjuku, so that I would not be tempted to to buy too many things and like explore my budget. I kept the habit of refraining from buying when I don't really need. Uh, even though I bought gouache today, <laughs> it's still um, the thing that I really use. And it feels cool to come back here as an adult and remember that um, it was my dream to go inside so many art stores, but I could not because I didn't want to exploit my budget. going to the plush area of Ginza for the third store of the day. It's almost sunset so I want to hurry. Gekoso is a fancy looking tiny art store in Ginza. They are specialized in watercolor and exclusively sell paints from their own brand. Today has been a quite indulging day for a gouache lover like myself and I'm about to be even more spoiled as all the tubes that you see here are gouache. I love how the gouache looked here. Like you can clearly see the color of the pigment and it's contained in a plastic tube that is very thin. They have so many drawers that are filled with different colors of gouache. Um, I really like how <laughs> the packaging looks because this is quite unique. So you can freely open and explore the colors that you want. Here they have the classic two, not many color options. They sell gouache pins that are really, really cute. This is a very unique paper clip as well. Mm -hmm. 
these are few more card apparently I don't understand Japanese enough to understand all the jokes here but I think they are really cute I really like the store because it felt like a designer store but for wash and watercolor and Ginza is like the area for designer stores I did ask for permission before filming inside the stores after paying for the gouache, um, the staff invited me to see the gallery on the underground floor so I went there for a quick look to come to the last store of the day before it's closing time it's actually only 5 um, p.m. but it's super dark because well we're in November and I was really excited to come to this store because the building was designed by a very famous architect I think his name was uh, Kengo Kuma he designed buildings that are quite well known um, for example the tourism and cultural center in Asakusa and also uh, an art museum in Nagasaki. This store is called Pigment and they are specialized in pigment. They have over 4,000 um, color selection and they also have 200 antique pigment too, if I read correctly. Here we are inside one of the most unmissable art stores in Tokyo probably, at least for interior design and color lovers. Pigment is the equivalent of a designer store for art supplies for sure. The store is just so beautiful. <laughs> On this wall here, they display the different ingredients that they use to mix their painting. There's just so many pigments on the wall, like, <laughs> wow! I'm just so amazed at the amount of metallic and neon pigments that they have here. Like, all the pigments that they have are so bright and so shiny. This pink here is called um, Aurora Pink. It doesn't translate very well in the camera, but in real life, it's just super, super bright. There are so many colors. This brushes stand looks like an art installation in itself. You deeply feel the craftsmanship that goes behind all the products here. It's <laughs> crazy. On the front counter, they also display the different types of plants and rock that give um, the pigment they have in store. There's maybe like 10, 20 of them. Obviously, there cannot be 4,000 of them that would take a lot of space. In terms of options of supplies, the store is definitely more on the minimalistic style. Like they don't have a lot of different options, but the options that they have are like on another level. <laughs> Let's look at how they display the brushes to be totally in harmony with the ceiling. Okay, it's definitely not like makeup. <laughs> 
I love how they display many things here like they show you the example of how everything can be used for example these are gel medium or acrylic and they show you how this gel can be made to achieve various effects and I think it's really cool you can explore while also getting educated about how the different paints are made Quench my thirst, she's my lemonade The yellow that I couldn't paint Shall I compare it to a summer day? Just like the sun, it will never fade I'm feeling just so happy I just love the fact that all four stores were just so different from each other like the first store was more on the functional uh, practical side unfortunately my battery died while i was filming but that's okay if you have been to tokyo and have visited art stores in tokyo uh, which one was your favorite i would really love to know because there are so many art stores that i wish i could visit that would be for next time soon hopefully in the meantime there's another video in japan coming up in osaka so if you like this type of content and would love to see more in the future why not consider subscribing that would be really cool see you in my next video bye bye I will never fade. the cool breeze in the shade my four leaves to the plate right to my mistakes